Hi! So, this is an introduction to the Bradley Method of Natural Childbirth Exercises for Pregnancy. So you want to do these every day during your pregnancy. You want to start with small amounts and increase each day, each week I should say, uh, until you get to your due date and continue to practice them uh, for a healthy and low risk pregnancy. So, the first exercise we'll do is called Taylor Sitting. This exercise helps put your uterus into, uh, into the right place, helps align things. Um, it helps take some pressure off. Um, it helps with some circulation and it's, it can be more comfortable sometimes in late pregnancy as well. Um, you'll want to mix this up. So sometimes sitting up like this, sometimes with one leg or two, leaning backward, leaning forward, but never slouching. So, upright. So, Taylor sit in a variety of circumstances all day long. Our second exercise that we're going to talk about is pelvic rocking. Pelvic rocking is not the same as cat cow, which you may be more familiar with. Cat cow focuses on the upper back. Pelvic rocking focuses on the hips. We dip the hip down, and then we come up to flat back. Dip down, and up to flat back. This should feel comfortable. This should feel good. It should put weight off of your, um, weight off of your back, weight off of a lot of different organs, um, help with digestion and circulation. This is a great one to do before bed. Um, we recommend 40 of these before bed. It's great to do this before the side relaxation, which we'll talk about. Your partner can help you by putting their hand on your hip and making sure that you are dipping your hip as opposed to uh, raising your shoulders. The next exercise we'll talk about is the, is the squat. We'll show you two different ways to do the squat. The first way is by yourself, if you're able to. The more pregnant you are, the more you'll want to probably spread your legs to feel more comfortable in the squat. Um, so you may be able to start out like this, but you may need like this. This makes it easier the wider it is. An important thing to note with the squat is that your feet will stay flat. Your, your uh, heels stay on the floor. And you want to do two types of squats. So you want to do both a fitness squat and the pregnant lady squat. I will demonstrate both for you. The pregnant lady squat is like this. We always start by tucking the hips to protect the back. It's helpful when you're pregnant to put your arms out to help with balance. We go down as low as we can comfortably, making sure our knees do not track out over the toes. When we come up, we come up bottom first. All is very slow and controlled. So we'll do that one more time. And then you also want to do strength, uh, strength building squats. Again, having your arms out can help you. And this is just more of a glute squat. You always do want to make sure your hips are tucked to protect the back. When you're squatting, especially when pregnant, sometimes you need a helper. This is a good job for your partner. To squat with a partner, make sure your arms are straight. Hold on to each other's wrists and back up so you have straight arms. Keep your legs wide as needed. Continue the same good form by tucking, tucking your bottom so that your uh, back is protected. And then your partner stands still and holds, holds straight while you go down and do the same way. So down, bottom up first, down, bottom up first. You can also do a variation of fitness squats this way as well. Okay. For our next partner exercise, this is one that you need your partner for. Called you the need butterfly. to find a wall and your partner. You only need to do a few of these exercises per day. 
um, they're going to strengthen your thighs and help um, especially after second stage. So we'll show you how to do that. Moms, you'll want to be against the wall. You should imagine a triangle, feel a triangle of space behind your back. So you don't need to be fully flat against it, but pushed back a little bit. Your legs are open. Your partner comes in front of you. Your partner's job is to put a little bit of counter pressure. You'll want them to not hold on your knees directly because especially later in pregnancy, all of the joints can feel very disjointed. Um, so if he could put his hands or her hands on your thighs or your, or your lower leg, that will be more comfortable as you move further along. Your partner will put their hands on the outside of your leg and you simply open your leg and they'll put some resistance against you. The exercise should be slow and controlled and you want them to put enough resistance so that you feel something coming back, uh, but not so much that it's, it's very painful and difficult. Our next exercise, our next exercise we're going to talk about is the Kegel. Um, this one's harder to demonstrate. We don't recommend that pregnant women lie flat on their backs, but I do think that sometimes it's helpful for, um, it's, I do think it's, it's helpful to see this um, sometimes lying on your back. So I'm going to show you how your partner can help you as well. When lying flat, if you let your legs open, either one side against a wall or both sides against stacks of pillows, there's a ligament here in your inner thigh. A partner can help you by putting their fingers and trying to find that ligament as you attempt to do a Kegel, and that can help you to identify where the Kegel muscle is. Other ways to identify where the Kegel is, is to stop the flow of urine uh, while you're on the toilet, but don't make this a regular habit. Um, and of course, note that you don't urinate yourself every time you do a Kegel when practicing. So uh, it's, not, it's not to say that that's the only way you feel that. The Kegel muscle is a sling uh, under your pelvic organs, and it's it's really necessary for a lot of important functions and you can actually pull it up quite high um, and so we recommend practicing several different patterns the first week with the kegel is to just try to identify it um, the second week to try to identify contract and let go uh, and then throughout do some different patterns of stair steps up and down etc to really get good control over that kegel muscle um, it's really going to help you both in pregnancy and then in postpartum as well so we recommend doing many of these, working your way up to 200 of them per day. Uh, do them in sets of 10. Um, and then the last one we'll do together is the side relaxation position. I don't have my pillows here with me today, but the best way to do this is with several pillows, um, especially um, as you get further along in pregnancy, even using your, your pregnancy pillow if you have a special one can be very comfortable. The things to know about the side relaxation position is that this is um, a great way to sleep. It can be very comfortable in pregnancy, um, and it's also a great way to labor um, and to be really comfortable in labor. Lying on your side, particularly your left side, um, can be protective um, of a lot of of a lot of potential problems. We're not 100% sure why, but it seems we get uh, better circulation of blood flow that way. So it's also good um, to to practice lying on your side and getting comfortable with that as well. We will lie on our side. We want to rotate a pillow under our head so that it's diagonal. And we want to have a pillow up under our upper leg um, to help keep that comfortable as well, as much as you need. If you need a pillow behind your back, that's good as well. Some women like to push their leg forward. Um, that can be very comfortable, especially um, in pregnancy as well. It's great to do the side relaxation position after you've done your pelvic rocks. Uh, it helps to put baby kind of to settle to where we belong in a more comfortable place um, and helps, uh, helps you be more comfortable for later in the day as well. Thank you for sharing these exercises with me. I hope they help you in your pregnancy journey.